This is Mayor Scott Slifkin. I hope this message finds you safe and comfortable at home. This morning at 841, I declared a state of emergency for West Hartford. I made this declaration at the request of Fire Chief Gary Allen, who is overseeing our Emergency Operations Center. This declaration is made in direct response to a notification we received a short time ago from Connecticut Light and Power, indicating that they're pulling their crews from the area. I want to be clear that the reason for this declaration is not due to worsening weather conditions. Hurricane Irene, as we're taping this, has been downgraded to a tropical storm. We continue to track weather reports and we're fully prepared to respond as necessary. But CLMP will not be able to respond to down power lines. West Hartford emergency crews will continue to protect affected areas. What this means to you, essentially, is that if you see a down power line, you should report it to us immediately by calling 911. West Hartford emergency crews will respond and will block off the impacted area. However, we will not be able to turn off the power or otherwise fix the line itself until CLNP puts its crews back on the streets. Accordingly, we strongly urge you to stay in your homes and to not venture out for any reason. Should you have any questions or concerns, please contact us at 860-523-5203. I thank you for your patience. Please stay safe. God willing, the storm will pass in a very short time, and we'll be back to better times tomorrow. Thank you very much for listening. No wonder they postponed trick-or-treating. There's lines down in the middle of the road. Because 94% of West Hartford is without power, Elmwood Community Center is an emergency center. It has hot food, hot drinks, and a charging station to charge electronics. I'm all right. The all right. Is closed. A good place to stay warm and stay hydrated. The state sent these ready to eat meals. Supposedly, they're really good. Yeah. Yeah. At least we're doing something, you know. We're out of the cold and we're warm and it's keeping us busy too. So right now we're warm and we're happy. Yeah. <laughs> Blame God for what he's doing. Ah. Because people don't believe in him anymore. And he do those things to make you believe that he is still in control. You understand? Yes. He is still in control and he knows what he's doing. Trying to bring people back to where they're supposed to be. People are charging phones, iPods, laptops, and any other electronics they might need to charge. Places like St. Mary's have to rely on generators for auxiliary power during the power failures. Because the power is out, many sump pumps in West Hartford are not working. It has to be emptied by hand. For the most part, West Hartford Center seems to be running full of power. Hopefully the power for the rest of the town will be coming on pretty soon. For Be The Media, I'm Michael Barsha. During this difficult week, town officials gather here to discuss shelters, generators, and outages. What's coming next? When's it going to happen? Right, we don't need to print out the dirt. Okay, go to Westbrook. We got an intern in Westbrook. Do that. Okay. I 
sense of a lot of frustration at this meeting. Can you talk about that? I, that's exactly what's going on here. We're, uh, we're beyond frustrated. I'd say we're, we're furious. This is moving far too slowly for our residents, far too slowly for our uh, you know, for our, our patients. Is, is worn thin. It's hard to even say anymore. Uh, but what, what's happened is absolutely unacceptable. Everything. Uh, that we can do depends on the power company's ability to clear wires and get the power back on, and they are moving far too slowly every time we have a meeting. Um, we find out the things we were promised in the morning um, aren't here in the afternoon, the things that are promised in the afternoon aren't here the next morning. And it's, it, it got old two days ago, and I don't even know how to describe it at this point. So what would you tell my parents? I would tell your parents, uh, don't don't expect to have your power on uh, anytime soon. Don't expect it to be, uh, don't expect the power company to meet the Sunday night midnight deadline. We're, we're hoping against hope that it will happen. We were fighting to get it on as soon as possible, but um, I'll believe it when I see it. So we, we may be in for a couple more days of this uh, than, than, we had, uh, than we had hoped for. Wow, what a tense meeting. Town officials want more information than they're getting from CLMP. From Be The Media, this is Lindsay. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Susan Christensen. Hi, and uh, I am Andre Brell, a board member of the West Hartford Community TV. We are in the third night of the West Hartford Community TV, the Media Marathon. I love Be The Media. Now, in case you're not familiar with this rapidly expanding community program, Be The Media is a grassroots journalism program launched by WHC-TV just two years ago. And all this week, uh, we are showcasing video produced by students, mm -hmm. business community, and community leaders. It's a real group effort. And we kick off tonight's marathon with a great example of how Be The Media can put the spotlight on important work underway in West Hartford. Right now, we're going to take a look at some scenes from a teen project focusing on the dangers of binge drinking. I'm Sarah. I don't know if you knew that. Anyways, you know, I um, think I... Yeah, yeah. That's great. Sarah, we... let's get drunk. I mean, me and my last girlfriend, we used to get drunk all the time. Let's go find a bedroom. I can't really remember, but I'm pretty sure Sean is totally into me. We're probably going to date. If he was totally into you, then why did he post a picture of you in your thong on Facebook? What are you talking about? Sean would never do that to me. You're just jealous. Urdu. It is the official language of Pakistan. Can you believe that thousands of miles away, across the ocean, here in West Hartford, at King Philip Middle School, four students speak Urdu? Hi, I'm Mrs. Kashinsky, and I'm the ESOL teacher here at King Philip Middle School. And I'm speaking with Shamir, who speaks Urdu. And Shamir, could you tell us how to say hello and welcome in Urdu? Okay, so you say hello in Urdu like this. Assalamu alaikum. And you say welcome like this. Wish I'm dead with an accent for the A. So, assalamu alaikum and wish I'm dead with Stanford. Alif, but uh, I like to answer questions about my language and culture anywhere, including video club. So the Urdu alphabet is different than the English. Yes, and it's harder to write than say. What is the most popular sport in Pakistan? That would be cricket and badminton, and um, cricket is um, a really, really national sport in Pakistan. How is 
Pakistan food different from American food? It has a lot more grease, and it's really spicy most of the time, and it looks really good when you put it on the table, and it smells really good. Some students at KP don't speak or do, but they do understand it. Assalamu alaikum. Hi. In truth, I don't really speak that much Urdu at KP, but I do at home. My mom always greets me in Urdu when I get home. She just wants to know if I had a good day. I also listen to some Urdu music when I get home from school. I like this song because it, the tempo is really well and the music at the beginning is really catchy and it kind of goes into my head and I always repeat it and it's also a good thing to say in my religion. My Muslim religion is really, really important to me and I say my prayers in Urdu. I have three religious sentences on my wall. One of them reads, Whatever God gives you, you can't refuse it because it's from Him. These are my brothers, Mahir and Ari. They speak Urdu too. Say hello, it's hard for the in Urdu, guys. Thanks for visiting. One part of me is my home here in West Hartford, and another part of me is my culture that comes from Pakistan, across the ocean, thousands of miles away. Meet Vicky, mother, grandmother, dancer. She has been volunteering at the Elmwood Senior Center for over 30 years. I don't even think of my age. I always do the things that I could do and that's it. I, I don't say, oh, I'm 95, I can't do that. If I can do it, I'll try it. My hobbies, dancing, and I like to do different recipes. I used to mow my own lawn and do my snow shoveling. I, I love the snow shovel. I keep telling everybody how wonderful she is, you know. I mean, she's my 95-year-old sister. I call her a little soldier. She walks so straight. And she <laughs> Vicki, Claire, and Virginia are sisters. Ranging in ages from early 80s to mid-90s, there's nothing these women cannot do. We were brought up to be seen and not heard. You know, so that's, we changed. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so what about items that aren't recyclable in the big blue bin? Take electronics, for example. Did you know that it's illegal to throw electronics away in your garbage can? And have you ever tried to dispose of them on those two or three days a year where they have free electronics recycling, and then you completely forgot or you were out of town? Well, the Green Monster in town has the solution for you. And we modeled this company after the state laws are in effect now for covered CEDs. So that's your televisions, your CRTs, your printers, and your computers. And the manufacturers cover the cost of uh, recycling the products. We don't throw anything into a landfill. Nothing gets disposed of in a landfill. It's all handled correctly, it's all processed, broken down. You can bring electronics to cover CEDs, which are the televisions, CRTs, printers, computers, laptops, any kind of electronic devices we accept, cords, cables, uh, plastics, metals, old phones, house phones, uh, irons we'll take, we'll take uh, dehumidifiers, microwaves, air conditioners, old lawn mowers, any kind of plastics we can accept and that's all free. Only thing we're not accepting now is uh, light bulbs. We're the largest electronics processing facility in Connecticut, right here in West Hartford, our hometown. So it comes in from each town, it's weighed, it goes into the trailers, and then it goes to r and our downstream partners, and they handle the glass and all the covered CEDs. Everything else we take in, 
we process and move along the way. I felt that America was the place for me. It was the place. It was the place. It's about place and timing and location and calling. It was the place that I was to begin this mission of mine. And so I founded a ministry. And uh, with Water Garden Ministries, I found I wasn't really reaching as many women as I'd like to. Mm. Um, you know, it was more focused on community outreach to the homeless in the inner city which is fine, but what about the suburban woman? What about the working woman? What about the young girl yeah. in college that comes from what appears to be a okay family? You know, you know, because when it comes to socioeconomically, it wasn't like I was deprived. Right. You know, I right. had all the things that money could buy, but it was more than that that right. I needed. So what about those? I found I wasn't reaching them. And, um, you know, I, 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 after much prayer, you know, knowing me as a woman of faith, um, pray a lot about my issues, I felt led to begin royal proclamations mm. because now I'm taking my business law background, I'm taking my professional background, my experience in the marketplace as, um, as, a, as a senior management level, you know, leader in, in the marketplace, I'm taking all of that and rolling it into something to empower the business woman, the working mm. woman. And I think to the case in point, the various burger places that have popped up, I think that's in response to this recession. The price points are right for customers who are still looking to be entertained, still looking to go out and have a good meal, but aren't going to want to pay the $25 a plate that they may have been paying, say, in another part of the world. So. But they have 169 towns they can open up a, uh, a burger joint. And where are they opening them up? They're opening up in West Hartford. Why? Because people are coming here. And, and they're coming here, and, you know, success breeds success. What did Abe Lincoln say? <laughs> One lawyer in a town starves, two lawyers make money. <laughs> I mean, same thing here with restaurants. You know, it becomes, I don't, okay, if I don't want to hit one restaurant, I can go to another one. And so it becomes a place where people say, I have choices, and I don't have to just go to one place. 
And that is really an indication of success. And there's three lawyers at this table, so I'm going to say, you're the lucky one. Well, I'm lucky, right. <laughs> How about the mother of a lawyer? <laughs> um, 